I'm Jamila Michener. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Government at Cornell, and I'm here because I've written a book with Cambridge University Press called Fragmented Democracy, Medicaid, Federalism, and Unequal Politics. Well, I've pretty much always cared about race and poverty and politics. I mean, my mom literally has a letter that I wrote to David Dinkins, the mayor of New York City, when I was eight years old. Um, so the sort of impetus for thinking about this kind of research has been in me for very long. But when I was in graduate school, I was trying to find a topic. And I started interviewing low-income people on the south and west sides of Chicago. And I wasn't thinking about Medicaid, but they were. And they talked about it. Um, and it really made me stop and think about the importance of the program. It was a while before I could pursue the research fully, but within a few years I could and I decided to stop and really think about what Medicaid meant for people's lives. I think that people assume a certain type of person on Medicaid. Um, sometimes people think about sick people, sometimes they think about old people. They might equate Medicaid with sort of traditional welfare and think about poor people. Uh, but what's the, the actual case with Medicaid is that it's a really diverse program that covers all sorts of people. In many states, over 50% of beneficiaries are children. Um, and Medicaid is an important stopgap as far as providing health insurance for low-income people. And maybe the biggest mistake that people make is confusing it with Medicare, which is for old people. <laughs> I don't think it will be good. Um, I mean, a, a big part of what I find in the book is that people's experiences with the program, how it's administered, how it's designed, matter for how they understand government and politics. So if the government now says, we're going to make it harder for you to get access to health care, we're going to make you jump through more hoops, we're going to make you prove you're worthy, that you're working enough, that you're doing enough, uh, that's going to send the signal to people that their health is conditional on any number of things and that it's not really inherently important. And I don't think that will make people want to engage. So it won't be good for political participation. I don't think it will be good for much of anything, to be honest. I think that fewer people will enroll because work requirements stigmatize a program. It makes a program look like people are trying to take advantage of it, are trying to defraud it. And many people will just not want anything to do with that, even if they have genuine needs. So I think we'll have lower enrollments. I think we'll probably have lower utilization, which means even people who are enrolled in Medicaid won't use the benefits, right? And even during the research for the book, I interviewed people who said, well, I only use these benefits if I absolutely have to, because I don't want to take advantage of the government. And I think more thinking like that will prevail, which means that people may not get the preventative care that they should. Well, there were lots of people who surprised me, just characters, people who were fun and different and interesting. But probably the findings that were most uh, surprising to me were just how much variation there was. So I had a story in my head about what Medicaid was probably like, and it was a uniform story. And I started talking to people, and they told me all sorts of different things. And it took me a while to figure out that that was linked to place, right? That people in different states, in different counties, in different neighborhoods had very different experiences. But that was probably the thing that stood out to me most. Um, the other thing that stood out to me was just how aware people are of the political ramifications of their experiences with Medicaid, of what it means about who they are as citizens. When I first started this pro project, a lot of people would say, what does Medicaid have to do with political participation? You're fishing in the dark here. Um, but when I started talking to beneficiaries, that isn't what they thought. They, they could give me really well thought out um, and coherent responses when I asked how Medicaid was connected to politics. And, and that surprised me in a really pleasant way. People are aware. I guess I hope the book shifts the discourse around Medicaid policy specifically, but more broadly around public policy um, that aims to improve the lives of people who are vulnerable, and shifts the discourse towards centering the actual policy beneficiary. In the book, the voices of Medicaid beneficiaries really come to the fore, and I make the argument that we need to have people at the center of our conversation when we're talking about policies. We need to be thinking about how people's lives are affected by policy. 
Um, and I focus on their political lives, on their citizenship, but more broadly, it's really bringing the voices of beneficiaries to the front of the conversation. And I hope that's something that happens, that we can shift the discourse around Medicaid and make it more people-centered. Because Medicaid matters, it affects over 70 million Americans, and it matters not just for people's health and well-being, but for their place in our political community. So it matters for our democracy.